Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on protein synthesis. Previously, we discussed the process of cloning, including the cloning of plants and animals. We also discussed the importance of genetic engineering. In today's lesson, we will discuss the process of transcription and where it occurs. Protein synthesis is the process by which cells build proteins. Let us describe in detail the first step involved in this process. During transcription, a complementary RNA copy of a sequence of DNA is created. This is the first step leading to a gene expression. Gene expression is a process that takes information from a gene and uses it to create functional gene products, such as proteins. Most of the activities that occur within a cell, such as repairing and reproduction, are carried out by the production of proteins. Proteins are large molecules that are created by specific organelles within the cell. The cell uses the instructions that are contained within its genetic material to produce proteins. In other words, the code for a protein is determined by DNA. This code must be carried to the ribosomes so that they are able to construct the amino acids in the correct sequence and create the protein. DNA is a large molecule found in the nucleus that contains genetic code. The nucleotides of the DNA contain a sequence of bases. This is what makes up the genes that code for the protein. The amino acid inside each protein is coded for by a triplet, or a sequence of three bases. Thus, a gene is a sequence of base triplets in the DNA molecule that carries the code for a protein. Genes have four different bases, including adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Therefore, there are 64 potential triplet codes, but only 20 amino acids that are used to create all of the different proteins. It is important to note that none of the other 44 codes is spare or redundant. DNA has a double-strand structure. One strand of a DNA molecule carries the code for proteins. This strand is known as the coding strand, or 
the sense strand. The other strand is called the non-coding strand, or the antisense strand. In transcription, the antisense strand is used as the template strand. The sense strand contains the gene that codes for a protein. However, if it were transcribed, it would create a complementary sequence of bases. This would be too similar to the sequence of bases in the antisense strand and, thus, would not code for anything. Students, let us do an activity. Please, answer the following questions. What is transcription? Why do cells create proteins? What is a gene? Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure that you had no trouble answering these questions. Transcription is a process by which a complementary RNA copy of a sequence of DNA bases is created. Cells create proteins because proteins are used in the repairing and reproduction of cells. A gene is a sequence of base triplets in the DNA molecule that carries the code for a protein. Did you answer those questions correctly? If so, great job! Both messenger RNA, or mRNA, and DNA are built from nucleotides. However, they are quite different in a number of ways. mRNA is a smaller molecule, and it is single-stranded. The base of mRNA, uracil replaces thymine, and the sugar in its nucleotides is ribose. The sugar in DNA is deoxyribose. The triplets of bases within mRNA that code for amino acids are known as codons. Codons contain the code needed to create one protein. Codons are complementary to the triplets in DNA, except that they use uracil instead of thymine. Let us describe the steps involved when transcription occurs in the eukaryotic cell. In eukaryotic cells, the enzyme DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is also called the RNA polymerase, binds with a section of the DNA beside the gene that is to be transcribed. Then, the transcription factors activate the enzyme. The enzyme begins to unwind a section of the DNA, as you see in this image. RNA polymerase moves along the antisense strand and uses it as a template for synthesizing the mRNA. The polymerase arranges free RNA nucleotides into a chain. The base sequence of this chain is complementary to the base sequence on the antisense strand of the DNA. Therefore, the chain created by the polymerase has the same triplet code as the sense strand except that uracil replaces thymine. Finally, the completed molecule separates from the DNA, and the DNA recoils itself. The mRNA molecule now contains the code for the protein that was held in the DNA of the gene, and it is ready to move on and be translated into a protein. Students, in a moment you will see sentences related to our lesson that contain missing words. Please read each sentence and determine the missing words. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello, everyone. Please take a few moments and match your answers to the ones that you see on the screen. The triplets of bases within mRNA that code for amino acids are known as codons. The amino acid inside each protein is coded for by a triplet, or a sequence of three bases. The base sequence of the mRNA chain is complementary to the base sequence on the antisense strand of the DNA. DNA is double-stranded. In today's lesson, we learned about the process of transcription and where it takes place. In our next lesson, we will learn about the translation of the mRNA into a protein. This is all for today. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.